Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another Club Banger. Today we're hanging out in r slash choosing beggars where beggars get real choosy and sometimes it gets real off the rails. So let's go ahead and hop right on in. This post is by user Anne Green. The title of the post is The Store Revolves Around Me. Not sure if this fits, but it seemed close. I was in the grocery store and a woman was in front of me with a cart full of food and beer and a soda. She then started to ask for the various flavors of soda on sale she was unable to find. Eventually, the checker was looking on the aisle, another employee was in the back looking for the flavor she wanted, and another checker was helping. They brought up the two cases they found, but it was a four cases for $10 deal, so they had to get a manager to decide how to handle it. Then, they decided to give her a rain check. At this point, I was getting a bit irritated. Who waits until they get to the register to send people looking for what you want to buy? Then finally, the checker is bagging her food into her reusable bag. Another shopper goes walking by with a manager looking for her reusable bag and says, There it is! That's my bag! Pointing at the irritating shopper's cart. Oh, is that yours? I found it on the floor and didn't see anyone, so... The other woman and the manager unpacked the bag and she left with her bag saying pointedly, so that's why it wasn't in Lost and Found. Sadly, the irritating shopper had zero remorse. She took her rain check and left. Small aside on this one, rain checks were always a concept that I never really understood. If something's on sale and they're out of it, I'm not going to go walk up to customer service and be like, excuse me, I need a rain check as soon as possible. Like, I don't know. If it's not there, then I just kind of get over it and move on with my life. And while I agree with the OP, about this person coming up to the check stand and then trying to get somebody to find a product. It's a little bit late in the game to have somebody search for soda, but at the same time, yes, it's irritating, but it's kind of one of those things that I honestly would have gotten over really quick. The thing that really gets me is that this person picked up somebody else's reusable bag and tried to use it and pass it off as their own. Not exactly a good look there. My son is turning one on Monday and we're having a birthday party on Sunday. I specifically asked for everyone coming to bring five to $25 to go towards a big gift or experience. We were thinking of maybe getting him a Kiwi Crate subscription. Well, now I have this friend messaging me saying she doesn't have cash, but she has a Target credit card and wanted to know if she could just have her kids pick out things and bring them anyway. I tried to tell her we are very intentional about what items we bring into the house. Our toys for the most part, besides some things that were given to us, that I can't get rid of because son loves, are Montessori style. No plastic, no batteries, and help with dexterity and learning. She then asked me about balloons. I told her that we don't use those because they're bad for the environment. So she said she would get biodegradable ones. I simply told her we didn't want them. So now she's acting like I'm being ungrateful because she wants to get my son something. I told her to pick out a cute gift card with her kids and then we can take our son shopping and see what we want to get. I told her if the kids wanted to pick something out that they could just get pool floats and then they can take those home with them. But she said then they wouldn't understand gift giving. I'm at a loss for what to tell her. I don't want her wasting money on something we don't want or need. She comes over every other week so she would know if I got rid of it. Also, my husband's mom doesn't seem to understand this either. She's bringing boxes of items from his childhood. I told him to let her know how we do things here, and he just caved and said she would bring them and we can get rid of some of the stuff we don't want. Feeling a little defeated today. How do you handle birthday parties where people just want to bring so... And that's where the screenshot ends, but this person is definitely being really choosy, but at the same time, uh, I'm not a parent, so I really couldn't comment on like the style of parenting that's going on here. But I can definitely say that if you don't want something, you could always just toss it out. Or honestly, you can just tell them straight up. And it looks like you're being pretty straightforward with people. Like, hey, these are the kind of things that we want. These are the kind of things that we don't want. And if they decide to bring them anyways, eh. People are always going to end up doing whatever they want to do, really. And there's really nothing you can do to stop these people. Um, best case scenario, they include a receipt. And then you can just go return the item and use it for whatever you want to do. I saw a sign in the shop yesterday that said... My prices are based on my talent, not your budget. I feel like everyone with a craft should have this sign. Barbers, photographers, makeup artists, tattoo artists, caterers, etc. 
And I completely agree with this because it's one of those things where it takes a lot of time to become talented in one of these. I get when people are getting started out, sometimes you can get away with like the whole, but I'll do it for exposure. And it's not something you can just do to people who are already established in that business, especially people like tattoo artists. Uh, if you've ever been on the bad uh, tattoo subreddit, that's a pretty good example of what happens when you get a tattoo and you pay an exposure bucks. The moral of the story is you get what you pay for, and if you don't pay for it, you better expect something wild and off the wall. Just my perspective on it. Please don't invite me to no barbecue if all your sodas are going to be off-brand. I don't drink Dr. Thunder. Um, I do. I, I mess with Dr. Thunder. Dr. Thunder's hella good. Honestly, I'm just excited when people invite me to barbecues, so I mean, I'm just grateful for what I get. Like for Cricket. Today is my mom's birthday. Please, one like. Please help me to reach 4,000 subscribers. Please. Please. It's for that single person who is reading my comment. I wish you a very successful life. May God give you all the happiness, health, and success in life, and all your dreams come true. Please, please subscribe to my channel. Please, please, please. I know that fame doesn't happen overnight, so I'm doing my work with all passion, and I just want to become a successful YouTuber. Please subscribe my channel, please, please. And wish me luck, anyone, by commenting on my video. Please, please, love from small YouTuber. Love, please, please, please. Subscribe my channel, please, please, please. Help me to reach 4,000 subscribers, please. Just based on the amount of emojis in this, it was kind of difficult for me to read, and the punctuation in this was very, very sparse. A uh, very, very long run-on sentence. It was very difficult to read, but... Based on the number of emojis, I almost thought this guy was going to start pitching Young Living Essential Oils to me or some sort of MLM. So, interesting use of emojis. Uh, I hope you reach 4,000 subscribes, my dude. This next post is by the user DicebergYT. The title of the post is Lady Trying to Change Price After Buying. I might post pictures later if this receives good feedback. But here's the story, and sorry for bad format, I'm on my phone. I do some buying and selling on eBay. A lot of precious metals is what I like. So I sold this big chain for $250 on auction. A few days after the auction had ended, the winner messaged me saying they just got laid off and it could be a few days or weeks before they can pay me. Usually this isn't a problem, so I say okay and I wait. She later messages me saying she'll be able to pay me on July 6th. Great. Finally, I can ship it out and get the money that I need. A few days ago, she messaged me asking me to drop the price to $200, which would be 20% off. I tell her how I need the money and can't afford to cut the price. She does the math on the value of silver and gives me the melt value. I said how silver jewelry is worth more than normal silver. So after I said no several times and told her how the eBay auction system is legally binding, she's still asking me to cancel the order relist it for a price I can't afford to do, and then wait more so she can pay me. TLDR, lady tells me she can pay for item on eBay, but it'll be a few weeks. Later tried to talk the price down after the auction had ended. eBay auctions are legally binding, so she's legally obligated to pay. About a month and still no money has come through. Edit, thanks to all the helpful comments, I have reported the buyer and canceled and reposted the item. Now this one is definitely annoying because I have sold things on eBay before and have had people do things like this where they're like, oh hey, you know what, I can't afford to pay the whole price, so let me just go ahead and try and haggle you down. Not really the way it works. And just a little personal story of mine, I was trying to sell a 12-inch MacBook, so one of the more recent Thin Boy MacBooks on eBay, and actually had somebody try and say that they purchased it from me and they didn't even put in a bid. They sent me like a fake email from PayPal that said, your payment has gone through, go ahead and ship the item. I'm like, nah, eBay, eBay doesn't say to ship it, bro. You didn't pay for, you didn't pay for it. Uh, so, so no, that's not gonna work, but nice try. But a lot of that happens on eBay. And I'm honestly just dumbfounded at the amount of people that think that they can get away with that kind of stuff. It's just honestly mind blowing. This next post is by the user S. Robinson 2012. CB guilts friends into moving her stuff. They show up and she has them move her roommate out as well. This alone is a CB thing too, but there is some background as well. CB friend moved out once, found an apartment she liked, but couldn't move in for another two weeks. We all helped her move all of her stuff into a storage pod. 
she proceeds to ask my wife if she can stay with us. It's just a few weeks, so we agree. We move her into our house. She then tells us she's hurting for money, and she found a cheaper, better apartment with a great roommate, but she won't be able to move into that one for four months. I say no, but my wife feels guilty, and she stays with us rent-free for four months. We all move her into her new perfect apartment. A year goes by, and the lease is up. CB and her roommate decide to rent one-bedroom apartments in a different building. A one-bedroom obviously costs more than a two-bedroom, and since she's always saying she's low on money, I'm surprised she opted to do this. Anyway, she announced in our group chat, friend group is about 15 people, that she's moving out and is going to need help moving. Keep in mind she announces this and doesn't ask. I'm going to be on vacation on the move out date, and no one has responded to her announcement. She messages a few more times and finally two guys agree to help her. They show up and CB tells the guys her roommate needs to be moved out too. This is her fourth move. I think she'll be forced to get a U-Haul for the next one. Uh, that's going to be a yikes for me, dog. The fact that one of your friends essentially just uses you for four straight months rent-free is a little messed up. I can see myself getting in that kind of situation, though, because I definitely have some friends that kind of get into the feels for me and know how to tap into me wanting to help people out. So I could definitely see myself getting in that situation, but probably after that I would have been jaded on that friend and wouldn't have helped them with anything. It looks like your friend group was not as jaded with them as you were, and they ended up moving the roommate out too, which to me is honestly just absurd. But if they did it, they're pretty much laying the groundwork for this person to just continue to walk all over your friend group. It sounds like either your friends and you need to start setting better boundaries and telling her just like straight up no, or I don't know, man, just cut ties with this person because it sounds like they're just a leech. And unfortunately, sometimes you'll have friends that do that. All right, y'all, thank you for joining me in r slash choosing beggars. Honestly, one of my favorite subreddits. And if you have any suggestions for subreddits, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below and like at the end of every one of my videos. No glove. No glove. Peace.